Happy Tuesday. Feels like this week is flying by already. This is my last day off. It's been uh, hot. It's hot here. I hate the summer. If I ever mentioned that, I hate the summer. If I could find a place to live where it was 20, 22 degrees the entire time, slightly overcast and a little bit breezy, I would be super happy. But it's not. It's like 28, 30 degrees here, and I've literally been hiding in my house for three days with my air conditioning because I hate sweating. I have to do that enough when I work during the week, so I just hide from it all weekend long. It's totally fine. Um, so let's get into this week's um, the let's get this chateau into shape was fun to watch. Holy fun to watch. It's in the three, well, four, I guess, almost five months that I've been watching um, the Chateau Diaries and seeing the differences little by little. Every week there's something new. The last little while is like a dozen things new all at the same time. There's literally, I don't think, a day that something new doesn't happen in that house. And that's because of Tomas, that's because of Selmar, that's because of Natty, it's because of Marie. It's, it's really, really quite stunning um, to see how quickly it's going and how much of an impact you guys have on what's happening. Um, I can't. Yeah, it's hard to wrap my head around sometimes, but it's so much fun to see. I almost feel a little bit sad because by the time I get there, so much will be have been done that I'm not sure there's going to be anything left for me. But it's fine. It'll be springtime. And yeah, Natty, just so you know, not November, definitely spring instead. I'd rather be there when the gardens are starting and there's things outside to do and walks to take and all of that stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, it's really, really stunning. Um, I was watching a little part where she, Steph was upstairs with Isabel in her apartment. That canopy over Isabel's bed, I need. I need some form of that over my bed. Um, during the three months on lockdown, we finally, after three and a bit years, redid our master bathroom and our master bedroom which up until then had been a dumping ground for everything. Kind of like Stephanie's hallway of doom. It was my room of doom. Um, and it's now lovely. I'll actually um, post some pictures somewhere because, well, not necessarily the bedroom. You've seen the picture thing. My bathroom, I redid in sort of a chateau inspired way. Um, the floor and the ceiling particularly. So when I get to it, I'll post the link or something on in for my Instagram thing or something and show you guys that because yeah it was quite the project but it's really neat and I really like how it turned out it's super purple which is one of my favorite colors it, you can tell my house is all kinds of colors my kitchen is bright yellow um, my whole dining room and living room are this red I actually had them paint this red before I moved in here because I knew that was what was going on the wall um, so every room is a different color um, yeah, the canopy, I, when I come over to France, uh, in the springtime, I'm bringing a whole extra suitcase, like an empty giant suitcase, just so I can go to the charity shops and fill it with fabric. Um, I feel bad for the guys who are going to have to put that suitcase back on the plane, but not that bad. I'm still going to do it. Um, cause I'd love to bring home something stunning. Uh, that I can turn into a bed crown like that. That would be wonderful. I don't know if my husband's going to love it too much, but he'll live with it because he loves me. It's fine. Um, that was super sweet to see Michael uh, return the Karen Miller prints for Stephanie, uh, the one that got damaged anyway, in time for her birthday. That was lovely. Um, wonderful prints. I think... Unless I miss my guess, that link to Karen Miller's artwork should be uh, at some point soon, if not already, in the files where you can find everything else um, related to the Chateau. All the clothing companies, the tea companies, all of that stuff 
all in there. So that should be added if it hasn't been already. Um, I'm going to go in and have a peek because I'd like to see more of her work uh, to see what else she creates. I always love new stuff. I'm a big fan of artwork. This one right here and this one right here, my girlfriend did for me. Well, she did them and then I bought them from her. This one right here, I bought from Marketplace when we bought this place because I live with musician. Anyway, um, okay, so these chickens, these chickens that Dan is bringing, uh, Barama chickens, are huge. Like, I don't know if you all understand how big these chickens are. I saw a picture today of about a five or six year old child holding one of these chickens. This thing took up two thirds of her body length. It was so big. Um, I'll stick a picture, probably right there. And that's what one of the chickens looked like. Look how fancy their feet are. I just want to watch them dance around all the time. They're super cute. Anyway, um, yeah, I can't wait for those. I think for birds, I love chickens. I have friends who are scared of chickens and I never really understand why they're scared of, they're cute. Um, I also looked up the Sarama chickens. They're tiny. Dan's not kidding. They fit literally in the palm of your hand and they're itty bitty. So this right here is a hen. Um, I didn't grab a picture of a rooster, but if you're curious, go look them up because they're super cute and beautiful, beautiful birds. Um, all different colors, all different. Yeah, their, their tails go straight up at the back and then plume down. It's really, really sweet. So I can't wait. I hope she gets some of those too. Apparently they get along with the tiny ones, so that'll be fun. Anyway, um, Keto yesterday didn't go up properly. Obviously, you're all aware of that now. Um, that will be posted tomorrow night. She managed to get today's vlog up, which is good. Um, all happy about that. Uh, yeah, Keto will be tomorrow instead, and then we'll have another one on Thursday, and then Michael's will be Friday, and I'm super excited for that one, because he's off on an adventure somewhere, and he's not telling us where he is or where he's going. So, pretty stoked to see what he comes out with on Friday. Um, his vlog on uh, last Friday was lovely. It's... One of my favorite things, I grew up on 40 acres of farmland. So one of my favorite things when I was a child was running around through the woods and just exploring things. We had a stream and we had, you know, the neighbor's fences that we'd climb over and pass through and we had cows that would chase us. Um, there's a long story, but yeah, whole herd. It's terrifying. Um, it's not a thing you want to experience any time in your life. Um, they seem very docile. Cows are mean when they want to be. So it's best to just stay out of their pasture, usually. Uh, but that was fun. It was neat watching him tool around and find all the little bits and pieces. And you think, you know, you live on 60 acres, and I think we would all take it for granted. It's always going to be there. But to actually go out and have a wander around was really neat. And for me, um, after having done the story for Ernest, all I could see in that was continuations of Ernest's adventures. So hopefully at some point I'll be able to write some more things because that was really fun. Um, and the reaction from all of you was uh, amazing. It's not what I expected at all. I'm so tickled that you all loved it so much. And I appreciate the love and support um, that you showed for that one. So hopefully there'll be more in the future. Um, yeah, anyway, I think that's about it for the week. Um, the vlog this morning was, as always, super fun. Um, I think I need one of those robes. I, I need one of those robes. I think I might need the blue and white one or mommy's one. One of those two, because, oh, those are beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into, uh, into uh, ordering one of those because why not I just wander around being fabulous all the time should I not shouldn't we all really anyway um yeah so that should basically cover the week I guess 
There's a lot going on. I could talk for hours about it, I'm sure. But I'm pretty positive you all have seen it. It's good. Um, I mentioned when I posted this morning that there's been another running theme for me this week. I'm having a lot of conversations with uh, our members. Really amazing, um, eye-opening, and heartwarming conversations with a lot of you. Um, a lot of people responded uh, really well to me talking about, you know, finding your purpose and that uh, inspiration that I ended up with uh, from uh, the interview with all of Before I forget, the interview with Mummy. If you haven't seen that yet, literally turn this off and go watch that right now. That was the most fantastic thing I think I've probably ever watched in a really long time. Mummy is hilarious. That train station story, I I won't say it because it was gross, but I laughed in the middle when I shouldn't have. And yeah, <laughs> it wasn't fun. Anyway, um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. She's, she's fascinating. I really, really find her fascinating. She received a book uh, a couple weeks ago called Angels in My Hair. And it's about a woman who has um, the ability to hear, speak to uh, the dead and had it all her life. I'm a big fan of that stuff um, and a great believer in it. I didn't really think that mommy would be. And it turns out she is. So I'm going to get that book and I'm going to read it. If you haven't seen that video, go watch. I have a tendency to look at life uh, very differently than most people because of the experiences that I've had. Um, at 18, I took care of my dad while he passed away from cancer uh, with a stepmother I couldn't stand. Um, nine years later, my mother passed of cancer as well. Um, and then losing my son five and a bit years ago I look at life in a much different way than most people. And I have to remind myself a lot that most people haven't been through and experienced what I have. They don't see things the way that I do. But what it comes down to for me, no matter how much I fear doing something, I fear not doing it more. I don't like personally to have that feeling of I should have done this or I could have done that and I didn't take the shot, I didn't take the opportunity. I want to be able to say I tried no matter what. I don't ever want to give up on something knowing that I didn't do my very best to make it happen. You have no idea what you're capable of. We underestimate ourselves so much every day that fear is short and it's controlling you because we always fear things that we don't understand that we don't know until we get to the other side and then we understand them and we know one of the best pieces of advice i ever saw was do something every day that scares you do it anyway if it doesn't kill you what's the worst that can happen you fail, and then you try again, and you might fail again, but this time you're that much better than you were the last time. Every time you try, it's that much better. And one of the best quotes I've ever heard is, other people's opinions of me are none of my damn business. That's it, they're none of my business. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna hurt anybody. I'm not gonna cause anybody any grief. I'm going to spend as much time as humanly possible and as much energy as humanly possible putting good things out into the world and love and support and kindness and building other people up but I'm going to do it my way period and you're either going to like it or you're not I don't have any control over that what I have control over is me and what I want to see happen in my life, what I want to try, what I want to experiment with, what I want to 
leave as my legacy when I'm done here. It's one of those bucket list things. I just have to. It's like taking a trip all by myself. It scares the hell out of me. I gotta tell you, it scares me. I'm still doing it. Because I know that it's something I need to do for me. The same as the solo trip. Um, you'll pardon me. My allergies are driving me crazy and Mother Nature is literally trying to kill me right now. Um, there's so many things. There's so many things. The only, the only thing I regret not doing before I had children, because I had my first one at 23, um, was traveling. I still have time to go and do all the things that I've been dreaming of doing for 26 years. Because that's how long I've been parenting. 26 years. It's a long time. It's more than half my life. Almost. Um, and it was hard to wrap my head around, you know, now that she's 17 and a bit. She'll finish out the last couple years of her teenage years with her dad. What does that mean for me? What do I do now? I've never known myself to be anything but... Well, a mess, and then a mom, which saved me from being a mess. Um, so I've literally had to, during this lockdown and in the last few months, redefine who I am and what my role in the world is now. It took me a couple months to realize that now I have the autonomy to go do whatever I want. Any place I want. Um, and it was a little bit longer to work through the, yeah, but what if I'm not good at it? Or yeah, but what if it backfires? Or yeah, but what if it doesn't go well? I think I'm just too old to care now. That's really what it comes down to. I'm just too old to give a crap. Um, I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to hurt anybody doing it but I want to have a lot of fun doing it. I want to learn new things. I want to experience new cultures. I want, I want the world on a silver platter at my doorstep. It's not much to ask, really. Um, but that's what I love. So my fear is overridden by that, by the excitement of a new adventure, of what's on the other side for me, of what comes next. And every single day since I found Stephanie and Lalonde has been like that. Well, almost every single day. It's something new and it's a different adventure and it's a different message. And I'm absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. So I guess my entire rambling point is... If there's something you want to do and you don't think you're good enough, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Put it out there. You'll be shocked. You will be absolutely shocked. I promise you. I, in the beginning of all of this, thought I was the most untalented, uncreative, half miserable person I'd probably ever met in my life. And it turns out I'm not. Who knew? I can do things. I can write still. I haven't written anything but errand lists since my father died when I was 18. I'm almost 50 now. That's a long time. And that story literally came out of nowhere and wouldn't let me rest until I got the rest of it out. So you never know. You never know. I would encourage you to, yeah, write a list of all the things that you fear and see if you can figure out why you're afraid of them. What is it about that one thing that scares you so much? And really ask yourself, do I fear it because it's going to end my life? Or do I fear it because I'm embarrassed by it? Or because I might be embarrassed by it? 
embarrassment goes away. Um, I think a lot of that for us comes from childhood, for most of us, comes from childhood, from being embarrassed in front of our peers and being laughed at and all of that stuff. But we have to remember, we have to remember, especially now, that we're not surrounded by that anymore. We're surrounded by almost 5,000 people who want what we want, who want to support us and spread love and joy and laughter and make dreams come true. There's, everybody says there's a magic that comes from Lalo. And I believe that to be true to this day. Um, if you haven't heard the story of Henri, look it up. Henri uh, promised to pull together all the people to make the Chateau come back to life. And that magic has spread through cities and countries and continents. Have a little faith in that. Because we all ended up here for the same reason. You never know, you never know what's in store and what's around the corner. A little bit of faith, a little bit of courage, and you can do everything you want to do. Except really, if you want to be a gymnast. I don't think I could do that. No, no, that would end, that would end terribly. Hospital visits and why not? So okay, fine, there's some limitations. But really, you're so much stronger than you know. You don't even understand what kind of courage you have. You don't. So make yourself some lists. Figure out what it is you fear. And then see if you can find something relatively in your comfort zone to conquer it. I'd be interested to know what it is you find. A little bit of courage goes a really long way. And if you ever doubt that, you remember Stephanie and her very first vlog and look at where we are now. That's all you need to know. That little piece of courage is changing the world changed all of us because she took that one step and she wasn't anybody any different than we are not any of us and I know she'd be the first to tell you anyway I'm done babbling now my husband's going to be home with my dog soon <laughs> I made him leave so I could do this I love you all we're almost 5,000 we're almost 5,000 <sighs> It's so great. It's just, it continues to be amazing and stellar and phenomenal. And I am so grateful to all of you for all of your help and all of your support and all of your input and all of your love with each other. And yeah, you're fantastic. Who knew there was all that many people all at one time that could be so lovely. Anyway, that's it for me. I love you all. Um, I'll see you in a week. This was so much easier than last week, don't you think? Yay! I'm not stressed now. <laughs> All right. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.